Hey guys, what's up? What is up? No, I'm just kidding. What's up? Hey, it's Amanda. So today I'm going to be telling you guys about my 50 plus pound weight loss journey. It started in 2018 and it is currently May 5th of 2020. I'm going to walk you through it, tell you the tips and tricks that I learned along the way, and hopefully you'll learn something Maybe you won't, but at least you'll hear a good story. So anyways, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to hear about. If you have any questions as I'm going along, drop them below. So let's get into it, okay? Let's take a time travel back to yesteryear, 2015. We're going to start in high school. I graduated high school in 2015, and I was about 135 to 140 pounds. I was happy, you know, your typical three-sport high school athlete, technically four, actually five if you count cheerleading twice, but anyways. So I was a pretty big athlete in high school, very active, ate whatever I wanted, never gained any weight because I was exercising all the time then i went to college and so i started college in 2015 and the freshman 15 is real let me tell you except mine was more like a freshman 25 when i went to college i definitely partied a lot just a lot of bad habits so when i went to my freshman year of college it was like drinking and then during the week freshman year at my university required us all to have unlimited meal plans oh my god i know why they make us have unlimited meal plans because everyone wants to eat when they're stressed and everyone is stressed because it's college but holy cow i abused that meal plan oh my god i would walk in i would try to like get a salad maybe once a week to you know make myself feel good no, but it was always pasta, pizza, the fried bar, which means like hamburgers, french fries, all of that stuff. It was just all quick and easy food that was greasy, super unhealthy, didn't know anything about the nutrition that I was eating, and it definitely did not treat me well. The food that I ate in college did not treat me well. So sophomore year started, that's 2016, and I was at at least 160 pounds. Yeah, I was probably 160 pounds by the time my sophomore year rolled around from all the drinking and eating horribly and not exercising whatsoever. Sophomore year, I binge ate, binge drank. And when I say binge ate, I mean like there's this thing called Monday Night Nugs. That means that the local dining hall had chicken nuggets that were available from like 10 p.m., maybe midnight to like 2 a.m. or something. So it was perfect for everyone to go out on a Sunday, come back, and eat these chicken nuggets. Bad nutrition all around right there. But anyways, did that a lot my sophomore year of college. Did a lot of partying, a lot of bad eating. I ate a lot of wings i loved wings over still love wings over but i just eat it in moderation now and i don't eat it like every week twice a week so ate a lot of wings over and gained a lot of weight also during that time you go and through a heartbreak pretty typical high school sweetheart no longer a sweetheart so what else is a girl gonna do besides drink and eat when she's heartbroken i mean that's what i did probably should have done a lot of different stuff like exercise but nope i decided to resort to eating and drinking so that was a pretty low point in my life i gained a lot of weight so by the end of my sophomore year i was 200 pounds and then that summer going into my junior year i worked so much i worked like at least 100 hours a week because i was holding three jobs but i was working more than full time at two of the jobs and then working part time on my other job so it ended up being like 100 to 120 hours a week so i was not sleeping and whenever i ate because i was always on the go i would always eat something quick so like i would get mcdonald's i would shove it in my mouth as fast as i could and go to work and but i would eat like a lot of mcdonald's like two or three big macs or something like that just because i was like oh these are my meals for the day like i need to just eat all of it at once and i'll go to work extremely unhealthy habit by the way don't do that please don't do that trust me don't do that by the end of the summer going into my junior year probably weighed like 210 pounds 215 pounds somewhere in there that was definitely the heaviest i've ever been in my entire life and it was actually that summer that i was going to australia so i studied abroad in australia the university of western australia <sighs> hashtag team trinity all my love to trinity college so i studied abroad there and that was kind of when my life changed and i didn't even know it was gonna change so while i was abroad i met this girl named kiara and she was an ncaa athlete so she is probably the most jacked female i know her legs are insane anyways so i went to australia i met kiara she became like my best friend while i was there and because she was an athlete she had to exercise to keep up with her training so that when she returned home to play her sport it wouldn't be a big deal she would not have missed any time 
so she started training i think like at least four times five maybe six times a week and because she was my best friend there i would i want to spend time with her so we would go together and i have never really been in a gym besides pe during high school at that point so i had no idea how to use the equipment i had no idea what i was doing i literally would walk into the gym and i would get so scared and care would be like you need to calm down like everyone here is working out they're not paying attention to you which is true and if someone is paying attention to you just look at them and they'll look away and if not then wave and they'll really look away and if that doesn't work go up and say hi to them and say oh i see you looking at me do you have something for me no great bye bye but i've never had that happen usually if you just wave they'll be like and walk away so kiara and i worked out at least four times a week pretty intense and i only started out doing incline walking because i was petrified to use the equipment i didn't think that i could do it i didn't want to do it i was so scared it was just a big feat for me to even just get in the gym so she would do her workout for like an hour hour and a half and i would walk on the treadmill for an hour hour and a half and just walking like incline walk i put it up to like 10 speed of three sometimes if i got crazy i would put it up to like 14 or 15 and i would still do like speed of three to four for like the first month i was there and I started to lose a little bit of weight, started to get more confidence back, and Kara was like, you know what, like, let's try some weights, and I'll show you some movements. So she showed me some movements, we kind of walked through the ropes, and we did all these different exercises together, and we did kind of circuit training, we did strength training, we just did cardio days, all this stuff, but every single day she had to go, and I would go with her. And there were days, like, where she had to drag me out of my bed because I would take a nap to skip my classes. Um, because when you study abroad, I don't know how other international schools are, but all of the classes are actually online in Australia, so you don't go to class you just like zoom into your lecture whenever you want so i started to lose a lot of weight started to get more confidence in myself obviously kept going to the gym and then kiara also taught me a lot about eating so i i mean obviously when you're a kid you know what my plate is and you see all the fruits and the vegetables and the meats and you kind of know how to portion things but you don't actually follow them at all but those guidelines exist for a reason <laughs> so kiara would also like come to dinner with me whatever and i would just kind of watch what she was eating and then i would try to model it or tweak it to what i liked and that was just kind of how I started becoming more conscious of what I was eating and more conscious of my activity level. When I was in Australia, I also learned how to calculate my BMR. So I studied biochemistry, but I also minored in nutrition. And that's when I decided to be a nutrition minor was when I was in Australia because I was like, you know what? The fact that what you put in your body actually makes a difference, that fascinated me and it still does fascinate me. So I calculated my BMR and BMR means basal metabolic rate. So that's how many calories you're burning on average per day. That's based on a variety of factors. It's not your BMI. Um, don't get me started on BMI. I don't necessarily i think it's a good tool but i don't necessarily believe in it um because someone can be super athletic and technically be obese so i really focused on nutrition and i used the app my fitness pal and i started logging every single day this is not sponsored by the way if you think my fitness pal would sponsor me that's a joke <laughs> <laughs> they're never gonna sponsor me ever uh i'm way too unimportant for that so yeah i use my fitness pal and i tracked every single thing that i ate that was a huge eye opener for me if you have never tracked what you ate i highly recommend that you try it like you don't need to be super re religious like i tracked every little thing all the way down to the salad dressing the mayonnaise every i was obsessive you don't need to be obsessive but just see what you eat in a day and it might surprise you because it'll give you like a recommended bmr um and you can set a goal if you want to lose weight um if you want to maintain your weight whatever you can set your goal and it'll ask you some questions about your sex your age your height your weight your activity level and it'll calculate a bmr for you and from there it'll give you your recommended caloric intake for the day and using that tool was extremely helpful because if you ever want to get to the point where you can intuitively eat and i don't even think i'm like a hundred percent at the point where i'm proficient in intuitive eating i would say i'm very good at it but i'm not an expert whatsoever i still have a lot to learn um um, but basically the whole concept of intuitive eating is that you know what you're putting into your body and you can kind of eat what you want whenever you want in moderation so i use intuitive eating now but way back then i was extremely obsessive and it took a lot to get to the point where i am today like i said i tracked every little thing that i ate and i also tracked every exercise that i did i had a fitbit which was really good it was very cheap um the battery lasted for a week way better than the apple watch because the apple watch you have to charge every night and i just didn't feel like doing that too lazy for that. 
So the entire semester rolled by. I started this semester off at like 215 pounds. When I came home, I was like 185. So I did that over the course of five months. Then after that, I came home and I took an extremely hard semester. So I decided to live at home because I didn't want to pay for rent for half the year. And I just saved a bunch of money. But because I lived at home, I like didn't necessarily want to be at home. And that kind of gave me a lot of motivation to go to the gym. So when I was at the gym, Man, I was at the gym a lot. I was probably at the gym for like an hour to two hours every single day, four or five days a week, my junior year spring semester, and I lost a lot of weight. So I went from about being 185 to like 145 by the end of my junior year, start of my senior year. And that was like the smallest I've ever been since high school. Um, and I was like super toned. Like my arms, whew, I had such nice triceps. Right now I don't. We're working on them. They're they're a work in progress, but yeah. Then senior year rolled around, classes started to get crazy, med school applications started to come up, um, just life kind of started happening and I didn't go to the gym nearly as much. So I still would go to the gym like three or four times a week, but I wouldn't stay for like two hours and work out extremely hardcore and then track every single little thing that I ate. I got effective workouts in because at that point I really learned how to effectively train my body and I can go over that in a different video if you want, just comment down below if you like want some training videos slash tips for my specific training that worked for me. So I did that for my entire senior year and by the end of senior year I think I gained like five or six pounds. I was probably like 150, 155 at the most so maybe 10 pounds. We'll say I gained 10 pounds because like right now I'm about 155 and it's a year after senior year. So I've gained probably 10 pounds back but I also don't go to the gym nearly as much. Like I do some home workouts here and there. I would say like I go for walks but I don't hardcore go to the gym like I used to which I really miss but corona took the gym away and I also just work a ton. I Right now I'm working like 90 plus hours a week so finding time to work out is extremely hard on my schedule let alone to even sleep. So yeah, tracked my food and exercise. Those are the only ways that you are ever going to lose weight. In order to lose weight, you have to be in a caloric deficit. You can't take some magic pill that makes you poop yourself. You can't take these magic gummies that make things grow and shrink. No. All they're gonna do is get rid of your water weight and they're gonna make you poop yourself or pee yourself a bunch and they're gonna diarrhea the heck out you. They are not real. Those are quick fixes. If you actually want to lose weight and keep the weight off like I did, you need to be in a caloric deficit. And it doesn't need to be extreme. You don't need to do these crazy things, but just take what you eat in a week. So calculate it. See how many calories you eat in a day and try to subtract those calories. 200, 300 calories a day. See what you could make little substitutes for. And that's what I did. So for example, instead of eating yogurt, I would eat strawberries. Instead of eating like two slices of toast and peanut butter, I would eat oatmeal and peanut butter. Instead of eating three eggs, I would eat one egg and two egg whites. Like little substitutions that you can make will make a huge difference and you'll be surprised how easily you can shave off 200, 300 calories a day and before you know it, you're in a little bit of a caloric deficit and you start to lose weight. And then if you combine that with exercise, you're gonna be in an even bigger caloric deficit and you are going to lose even more weight and you're gonna keep the pounds off if you make this a lifestyle. This is not like a, oh, I'm gonna exercise all week and eat little, little, little birdie amount and I'm gonna lose weight. Yeah, you probably will lose weight, but the second you start eating again, it's gonna come right back. So it's all about being conscious about what you're eating. It's all about being conscious of what you're doing and also just how you're impacting yourself. Like, are you feeling okay? If you're not feeling okay, you don't have to be deadlifting your heaviest deadlift. You literally can just go for a walk and get just get moving, get exercising. It doesn't need to be this crazy gym paranoia obsession. I mean, it became that for me and I loved it because it was an outlet. But when I started out, I just literally walked on a hill essentially for an hour a day. Those little baby steps in a weight loss journey is the only way that you can be consistent. And let me tell you, in this journey, I gained weight sometimes, I lost weight. Like right now I'm in a little upflux. So I went down to 145, right now I'm 155. During my senior year, yeah, I went from 180 to 140, but I also went from like 180 to 160 to 150 back up to 160 then back down to 150 and to 140 it's not like a simple step that you can take it's not just a doom 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 it's very much a roller coaster ride and you have to accept that there are going to be good days there are going to be bad days and that 
is really hard when you're doing something because in today's society we are so used to instant gratification and the more that you can kind of pull yourself away from instant gratification and realize that the only tried and true method of progress is being meticulous and slow and steady with what you're doing that's the only way you're ever going to see everlasting results so i know it's a kid story but when they say you know why did the turtle win the race it's literally because he was slow and steady and he was disciplined and he gave it his all all the time and even though he knew sometimes he had to slow down because he was tired he still did it he ended up beating the quick fix you know the quick arrogant fix that's gonna solve all your problems no it's not basically i partied a lot i ate a lot of fried food i ate a lot of fast food and i didn't exercise and if you combine all of those you're gonna be in a caloric surplus if you're in a caloric surplus you're gonna gain weight i think it's 3500 calories is one pound of fat put that in perspective 3500 calories is indeed one pound or 0.45 kilograms of fat so like i said a little caloric deficit and exercise will go a long way so if you're trying to lose a pound a week you need to be in a 3500 caloric deficit that is a lot that's why you have to take things slow and the only way you're going to achieve it is if you do exercise it's really hard to be in a caloric deficit just by your diet alone you're going to go crazy i tried it i went crazy i don't recommend it i recommend combining good healthy eating habits tracking your meals track your meals first at your baseline because if you don't know your baseline you can't restrict yourself you know you have to know exactly what you're eating and then from there look and say okay this is my baseline this is not healthy or this is healthy where am i at with my baseline and then you can start making those little substitutions to your baseline and once you start making those little substitutions you can start saying okay i'm gonna take off 200 calories this day 300 calories this day, 400 200 whatever it is and then i'm also going to exercise these days around there it should add up to about three thousand to 3500 calories and before you know it you'll be losing a pound of week you won't be starving yourself because believe me i never ever starve myself during this journey that was like the one thing that i didn't want to do what i would recommend is taking it little by little and realizing it's not going to be easy there are going to be some weeks where you want to go out with your friends and you are in a caloric surplus but you know what that's one week it can't be every week if you want to see results but one week is okay because you know what there are 52 dang weeks in the year so one week is not going to screw you well up. Even a couple weeks is not going to screw you up. As long as you maintain a caloric deficit over time, you will lose weight. That is the only way you will lose weight is by a caloric deficit. And you don't get to pick where you lose weight. Let me just make that very clear. You do not get to pick where you lose weight first. Everybody stores fat differently. I store it in my stomach and in my thighs. Everybody stores it someplace differently. Some people it's in their arms, some people it's in their chest, some people it's in their butt, some people it's in their legs. It's literally everywhere. It's completely based on your genetics. So you don't get to necessarily pick where you want fat to be lost the most. You can train the muscle underneath your fat and then when you lose the fat, those areas will be toned. However, you do not get to say, oh, I'm only going to do arm exercises, so I'm only going to lose weight in my arms. It doesn't work like that. You're going to lose weight everywhere. If you have a really nice butt and you're only doing arms exercises and you're still in a caloric deficit, you're going to lose some fat from your butt. It's just the way it is. Science, okay? All right. So that is my weight loss journey. Those are the biggest things that I learned from it. I hope that you all learned something. And if you have any comments, questions, don't forget to drop them below. Subscribe, hit the like button, give this thing a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, comment. Let me know what I could do better. Comment, what did you learn? What did you have a question on? Just let me know how I can help you better. If you want me to go over how I use my fitness pal, if you want me to go over how I created my exercises for the week when I finally became confident enough what i did when i was a beginner an intermediate and who i used to help me actually i'm just gonna shout out a couple youtubers winnie simmons heidi summers pamela reef great great beginner videos that you can find that'll teach you how to lift teach you how to become comfortable in the gym and just i honestly like before i even started lifting i think i just watched youtube videos pretending that i was in the gym with them and i would just be like okay in this situation i'm gonna look like this and i just kind of envisioned myself doing it before i ever had the confidence to do it so 
So even if it takes that, like just watching some YouTube videos, envisioning yourself being in the gym and being successful with this person who's doing it, that might just be what you need to give you that extra push to get in the gym. And that's definitely what I needed. So I wouldn't be surprised if you need it too. But yeah, that is my weight loss journey. And I mean, in terms of a weight loss journey, I'm still on that journey. I'm not exactly happy with my weight right now. I wish I was a little more toned in some places. And so that's why this is a journey. It's not over. I'm definitely gonna start exercising a little bit more once my work calms down and I start med school, which I'm very excited about. And also just developing different habits when I start to balance out schoolwork and my new lifestyle, which is going to be very interesting. So I'm definitely gonna keep telling you guys about that as it happens. But yeah, so basically, if you're not happy with yourself, make some changes. It's very much easier said than done i know but hopefully you guys learned something and hopefully you have a starting point from this video anyways yeah thanks for dropping by thanks for watching my channel thank you thank you thank you just kidding thanks guys <laughs>